Well, there is this article that I published back in 2003 presenting the simulation argument. This is an argument that tries to show that at least one of three propositions is true, although it doesn't tell us which of these three. The three propositions in question is first, that almost all civilizations at our stage of technological development go extinct before they reach technological maturity. So that's the first possibility. Uh, a second possibility is that there is a very strong convergence among all technologically mature civilizations in that they all lose interest in creating ancestor simulations, as I call them. These would be very detailed computer simulations of people like their historical forebears, detailed enough that the simulated people in these simulations would be conscious. So the second possibility is that they just lose interest in doing this. And the third possibility is that we are almost certainly living in a simulation. So there's this argument that shows that one of these three is true. And the full argument involves some probability theory, but the basic idea can be grasped quite simply, which is that suppose it were the case that the first possibility did not obtain. So then some non-trivial fraction of civilizations at our stage eventually reach technological maturity. Then suppose the second possibility also does not obtain. So some non-negligible fraction of those mature civilizations are still interested in using the resources to running ancestor simulations. You can then show that because each mature civilization that devoted some resources to this purpose could run astronomical numbers of ancestor simulations, you can show that if the first two possibilities do not obtain, then there will be many, many more simulated people like us than there will be non-simulated people like us. In other words, almost all people with our kinds of experiences would be living inside simulations rather than outside them, if the first two possibilities are false. And the conditional on that, we should therefore think we are probably one of the typical simulated people rather than one of the exceptional non-simulated people. So the structure of the argument then is that if you reject the first two hypotheses, then the third one follows, which then means you can't coherently reject all three. That, that's the structure of the simulation argument.